Joining me now, a guest who believes that the U.S.-led coalition cannot destroy ISIS without the help of Iran. Jack Goldstone is professor of public policy at George Mason University. He joins us live from Washington, D.C. Jack, it's great to have you here on America's Forum. Thanks, J.D. I'm glad to be here. You bet. Now, you penned an article for Politico back in September in which you wrote the president and the U.S.-led coalition cannot destroy ISIS without the help of Iran. Has anything happened to change your mind about that? No. In fact, the only things that have happened have made it more clear that Iran is willing to help in important ways and that we should take advantage of that. Well, we were just talking in the news, Professor, about the, the ongoing negotiations in Oman about nuclear capability with Iran. So it would seem very difficult on one hand to be actively trying to dissuade uh, Iran on nuclear capability and at the same time trying to get them to help us with ISIS. Would you not agree that, that it would require superior brinksmanship to, uh, to keep them from going nuclear and at the same time getting their help? Well, it's better to have good diplomacy than bad diplomacy, and it will require good diplomacy to manage the relationship with Iran. They are a large country. They are seeking their own security above all else, and they're not inclined to cooperate with the United States unless it serves their interests. And for that reason, we should not be cooperating with Iran in any way that does not serve our interests. But for better or worse, the rise of the Islamic State has created a situation in which, in many regards, the interests of Iran and the interests of the United States are aligned. They need the U.S. air support to help keep the Islamic State pinned down to the ground. We need the support of Iraqi troops and an inclusive Iraqi government. And frankly, the biggest supporter uh, of the Iraqi government in terms of arms and guidance is Iran. So there's really no way for ISIS to really feel the full brunt of force from the air and from the ground unless Iraq, with Iranian support, and the U.S. are willing to work together. Jack, I believe it was George Washington who said we have no permanent allies, we had no, have no permanent adversaries, we have instead permanent interests. Now, mindful of that, that's right. you, you think we, we could arrange some sort of coalition with Iran, you, you set up the dynamic at work within Iraq these days, but what about the Iranian funding of other terror groups that have attacked Americans in the fairly recent past? Iran has become a more normal and less extreme revolutionary state over the last 36 years. Now, these things go back and forth. Uh, the Ahmadinejad government was a little more radical. Uh, we hope the Rouhani government will be a little more pragmatic. So you have to take advantage of opportunities to deal with the government when you can. Iran is not going to drop its support altogether for Hezbollah. I hope Iran can be persuaded to drop its support for the Assad regime in Syria, uh, which is also a very dangerous uh, regime and a dangerous enemy of Israel. So we need to really, as I said, have good diplomacy and explore where Iran will seek limits in fighting for its own security and where we just have to accept that our interests will differ. About now, the nuclear issue that you raised is a big one on which our interests differ. And, and mindful of that, with a minute remaining, in terms of brinksmanship, w would you trade a, a nuclear Iran for the vanquishing of ISIS and the spread of this modern-day caliphate? No. A nuclear-armed Iran is not tolerable for anyone. But that's not where the negotiations are. Iran wants to make a deal. They want to be in a situation where they are close, but not in possession of nuclear weapons. In fact, almost all of the arguments are, do we accept a deal that leaves Iran nine months away from having a nuclear weapon, two years away, five years away? Uh, and in this, we have to kind of make a deal that respects the difference, that if we create a situation where Iran has restrictions so that it can't acquire a bomb without another 9 to 12 months of visible work, then there's time to stop them if they start crossing that line. And time, so unfortunately, I think there's has... no way to allow Iran to have a bomb in their possession, 
but we can create enough distance and to create a safe margin. For we us. will have to leave it there because our time is up. Jack Goldstone, thanks.